So the space flight companies of the world have been doing their best to interrupt my video topics lately and continue to give me very interesting things to talk about. This is something we haven't seen a whole lot of lately, and that is, of course, explosions on the test stand in McGregor, Texas, but this looked like a pretty serious one, and it is making some people wonder whether or not it's going to have any impact on the upcoming fourth flight of Starship. Is the FAA going to see this event as being something significant enough to have a look at the rocket that's about to take off that is, after all, powered by Raptor 2s to see whether or not they might have a reason to delay the launch to get a better idea as to whether or not these engines are really ready to fly or if they may be similarly flawed? Well, let's go ahead and do a comparison comparison of this particular test and explosion and some of the other failed tests that have taken place in McGregor in the past. And the vast majority of these happened in 2022, so it's been a while since we've seen anything this serious. But let's go ahead and look at this one. As you can see, the destruction of this engine happened a lot earlier in the process, and when it turned green there, that was a sign that the engine was eating itself. How about this one? Once again, way earlier in the process. Also, you may notice, do you see how the exhaust is very directional there? That's because they have a flame trench in McGregor, Texas for one engine test stands, but they didn't have that and still don't in Boca Chica. Again, much earlier, and sharp-eyed observers have noticed that the most recent explosion actually took place after the shutdown, as if there might have been a problem with the engine that was identified and they shut the engine down, but there was a fire afterwards that eventually led to the explosion of the propellant. So yeah, by now I think all of you are getting the picture. Whatever happened on this test stand was substantially different, at least as far as timing is concerned, from the other test stand explosions that have taken place in the past at McGregor, Texas. SpaceX has yet to make any comments about this, but it's not completely unusual, nor is this restricted to SpaceX. Seconds. Now that was ugly. Granted, it was just the nozzle that exploded, but nevertheless, when you're talking about these types of engines, solid rocket boosters, this by the way is a Northrop Grumman Omega rocket engine that they were testing four years ago or so, well, you can't really stop a solid rocket booster. Those things are just going to keep burning and burning and burning until they run out of propellant. And by the way, this was a publicly televised test, and this is how Northrop Grumman deals with test failures and how informative they can be in the aftermath of something like this. Before we sign off, um, we're going to take another look at the test. Oh, no, sorry, we're not. So this concludes our broadcast of the Omega Rockets first stage ground test. Yeah, no real surprise there. We don't like how that looked. We're not happy that people got to see it. So let's shut the cameras off immediately and you girls stop talking. So yeah, 
That's the sort of thing that I think we commonly run into whenever you have something unexpected happen with rocket engines, especially rocket engines that are demonstrating proprietary new technologies, and when those new technologies fail in any conceivable way. But still, we're left with the question, what about the fourth flight? What about OFT-4? Is SpaceX going to still be able to carry that out as expected around June 1st or so? Keep in mind, the FAA has not actually concluded the mishap report from OFT-3. They haven't analyzed everything or submitted the corrective actions. A great many things that are supposed to happen in the aftermath of a mishap investigation before Starship can return to flight still has not transpired. However, as I reported before, SpaceX has requested an exception, something that they are allowed to do, given the fact that OFT-3 at least apparently did not threaten any sort of public safety whatsoever at no time during the flight, even when things didn't go all that well. At no time did that rocket threaten anyone on the ground, and that being the case, the FAA should allow the fourth flight to go forward before the investigation of the third flight is concluded. Well, here's the good news. I asked for a comment from the FAA, and I got it in just six minutes after I requested it. Let me tell you something. The FAA is very responsive. I don't care what anybody says. They are are really cooperative when it comes to providing information. Quote, the public safety determination request made by SpaceX applies to OFT-3. If the FAA agrees that no public safety issues were involved, Starship could return to flight operations before the mishap investigation for OFT-3 is completed, provided all license requirements are met. This process is unrelated to the Raptor issue. So regardless of what happened to the Raptor test in McGregor, regardless of how serious it might have been, regardless of what it might mean for Raptor 2 development, none of that is going to have an impact on this fourth flight. That having been said, though, it's important to keep in mind that if this fourth flight does not go forward exactly as described, in other words, if it does not adhere to the flight plan, in other words, if Super Heavy does not set down gently in the Atlantic Ocean in a controlled sort of simulated landing on the ocean, and if the orbiter, if Starship does not carry out at least an attempted landing in the Indian Ocean. If all of this doesn't go according to SpaceX's approved flight plan with the FAA, that's going to be another mishap. And there's going to be another mishap investigation. And we probably shouldn't expect another flight for at least a couple of months after this one. It's really important that SpaceX master this process difficult as it is. Although I have to admit, I think it's unrealistic to expect that SpaceX is going to get the re-entry and landing procedure for the orbiter down pat anytime really soon, which means I think the development process for Starship is not going to go forward as quickly as SpaceX would like. And that, of course, will have a significant impact on their obligations with Artemis. All that aside, though, I think that Starship is developing very quickly given how complicated and ambitious this project is. So I think we have every reason to feel good about how things are going right now. But if you really want to see us land on the moon anytime soon, well, not feeling so good about that. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon or on PayPal. I'm heading to Shetland in July to cover what is probably going to be the first ever vertical launch from the United Kingdom. The RFA-1 is going to be lifting off and also carrying out some new tests in July. I've been invited to attend by the Saxavord Spaceport. Looking forward to that. If you want to support it, all the details are in the description. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.